Joining me today is Michael Curley, Manager of Henderson Far East Income. Thanks for joining us, Michael. Can you tell us about the way you approach research and stock picking? Yeah, certainly. Henderson Far East Income is designed to capture the change in dividend culture that's occurring in Asia. Um, so we look for two types of companies. Firstly, we look for companies with high yield and sustainable yield. And secondly, we look for dividend growth. Within that, cash flow generation is key to us because um, basically companies pay dividends out of cash flow, not out of earnings. Um, so we're looking for that cash flow to, to be uh, continuously generated year after year. And most importantly, for that cash flow to grow uh, and generate higher dividend growth. Is there anything about the Far East that specifically makes it a, a fertile hunting ground for income seekers such as yourself? Um, well, there's a couple of things. The difference with Asia is, firstly, you have this underlying growth. You know, GDP growth in the region is going to be far higher than it is in the rest of the world, and that will translate into higher earnings growth and ultimately higher dividend growth. But I think most importantly, it's the diversity of income. If you look at uh, the income streams out of the UK market, for example, they're very uh, concentrated on certain sectors. Whereas in Asia, you get income from technology, industrials, financials, consumer. So it's a much more diverse income stream. While we're on the subject of dividends, Henderson Far East Income has paid a rising dividend for a number of years now. Do you expect that to continue in 2015? Yes, I'm very upbeat on the, on the potential for income growth in the region and obviously through the company as well. Um, dividends in Asia um, have grown, um, but I think the potential is, is still pretty strong. And the reason I say that is because uh, payout ratios uh, are still pretty low relative to history. And I think as Asia uh, generally adopts this dividend culture, we'll see that dividend continue to grow. So to my mind, one of the reasons for investing in Asian income related to other income strategies is that potential for that dividend to grow. Taking the region as a whole, Michael, are there any trends you'd expect to see playing out in 2015? Yeah, I think the dividend theme will continue to play out. Um, We've already seen it through 2014, and I think it continues into 15. In fact, if you look at brokers' estimates for dividend growth across, across the world from different equity strategies, it's Asia where there's dividend uplift is coming through, whereas the rest of the world is, is pretty benign and actually falling in some places. So I think that'll be a pretty strong theme for 2015. Otherwise, clearly what goes on globally with the discussions about uh, deflation, inflation, normalising interest rates will have a a pretty important part to play in the direction, certainly of markets. I still think there's plenty of opportunities to find stocks which you can get over that, if you like, those headwinds. OK, let's drill down into China just, just for a second, because people are constantly interested in China. Where, where is the country in its growth story and what might we expect from it? it it's in a maturing phase. Um, we've had the high growth level, now we're going to a more sustainable level. Um, but what's important about China is not the, the quantity of growth, it's the quality of growth. So whether it's 7% GDP growth or 6, it's what the drivers are is, is what's important. Um, to my mind, I think the transition towards a consumer-led recovery uh, economy from an, uh, an investment-led economy is what will drive the re-rating in the market. And, I, and I'm pretty upbeat that that will continue through 2015 and beyond. Are there any macroeconomic global issues that you'd be worried about in terms of affecting the region where you're invested uh, in 2015? Oh, there's lots of things. Um, you know, we're in that phase where uh, it's difficult to gauge whether we've got deflation, inflation, whether we've got growth, no growth. And you look at the different regions around the world, the US looks like it's in a recovery phase, whereas clearly in Europe it, it's stalling. Uh, Japan is, is a toss of a coin as to whether that's going to work or not. So there's lots of things going on, plus geopoli geopolitical risk in you know, Eastern Europe and elsewhere. So there's lots of things going on. At the mo moment, the markets are tending to ignore them, especially in the developed markets. Um, but clearly, if any of these come to the fore or escalate in any way, then you know, it's, it's a risk to equity markets. And finally, Michael, is there anything about the investment company structure itself that gives you an edge over open-ended fund managers? Well, they're easier to manage uh, because there's less flows, clearly. So you can make your decisions uh, based on a, a more forward-looking basis without being subject to inflows and outflows. Um, you have the ability to gear, so if there are any particular opportunities you want to take the advantage of, uh, then you can. Um, and for an income investor, the dividend reserve it, it adds some uh, sustainability, if you like, to, to the distribution. Uh, so all in all, uh, I think for an Asian income strategy, it makes quite a lot of sense. Michael Curley, Manager of Henderson Far East Income, thank you for your time. Thank you.